So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the chair, Ms. Caldwell, and Abigail, and Ms. Jacqueline Scheib, I hope I pronounced it properly, for the invitation to participate and this, to make a contribution to this seminar, which is really looking at women's leadership role in Guyana at this time. And I hope by expansion to other countries and to different aspects of our community here in Guyana. I would like to thank the Young, Leader, Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative for facilitating this conference and to say how um, interesting and exciting it is for me to see so many young women seeing themselves as not only as entrepreneurs but as leaders. The topic on which I was supposed to be questioned and which I'm going to try to speak now is leadership from a public sector perspective. And I always say I am not an elected official, that is my codicil, I'm not an elected official, I will not seek any kind of public office, so all my views are mine. <laughs> and because that gives me some freedom to speak. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to look at is what is leadership? Many people have this antiquated idea that the leader is someone who stands in front and pushes people forward. But my concept is of leadership is a person who influences, not necessarily from the front, but to be there in the trenches with the people who they want to move forward and to move forward with. Of course, when you are a woman, the dynamic begins change because we are still in this country dealing with some Neanderthal perspectives about a woman's role. And you, you hear some people voicing the thought that there's so much delinquency because the women are not at home minding the children, when there's the also, also not a realization that many women have to go out to earn a living to be able to support their children because some of them might have partners who might have moved on, or the fathers might just be absent. They're, they're making no contribution whatsoever to the upkeep and the support of their children. So women are thrown into that role. And I always tell women that they must recognize and admire the qualities they have in themselves, even though these are not heralded or commended. Because they are economists when they're trying to manage their meager budgets most times. They are counselors because they have to listen to different sides of the stories of their kids or their partners or their neighbors and offer advice. And they are also very good at other practical things. In my experiences with women around this country, I have met many women who will tell me to my face, I don't do anything. But then you will hear, you know, I have been looking after my parents. I haven't been working because I've had to stay home to look after my parents who are not well for about 15 or 20 years. And, you know, I, I don't do, I, you know, I just sew some clothes or I decorate cakes. But those are all skills. Those are all qualities that you have. And one of the best moments for me was a little girl in music now when her mother was saying, I, you know, I don't have any skills. And the little girl just piped up and said, my mommy makes the best chicken food. <laughs> so I said, there you have a skill, and you must exploit it, in the sense that if you can make money from it, we must not be embarrassed to ask for fees for the things we do. Very often, women feel that the things they do, they must not say, well, this is my, this is my labor, this is my time, this is my creative imagination at work. And we're very embarrassed to ask about these things. So when I see women getting up and talking about, you know, you do it, but you know, they did it for a friend or somebody asked you, and nobody is saying, what is the value of this labor? What is the value of the effort and the imagination that goes into this product? Could you please turn off your phones? Thank you. Um, 
Now, the second thing I, I, you have to look at is how you feel in a competitive environment. I have not operated in business, but I know there are many obstacles which women who get into the field of, 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 of private enterprise and the public sector as well in business will face. Because there's a, also a perception that women are fluff in this day and age. Regardless of how qualified or experienced you might be, there are still some people who feel that this is the little girl who you must send to make coffee mm -hmm. and to set up the room when you have a meeting mm -hmm. because those are women's jobs. Mm -hmm. So you have to fight aggressively against it. And when I say that, I don't mean that you must be abusive. And you just have to, in a very nice way, put people in their place and let them know that you're not there to fetch coffee for anybody or to fix the chairs and tables. You are there as a business person and a valid and equal member of that group. Um, my own thing is that I have been my jobs. I have been one of the things I've had to be tasked with is organizing meetings. And I've never left my staff to do all the work. If we find that we have to set up a room, I'm going to be there helping them put up chairs. So you have to understand the difference and then what is expected of you and what you need to do as a leader so that your team, your staff with you, know that you know what you're doing, which is the first thing, and B, that you are not afraid to get your hands dirty as necessary to get the job done. So, I mean, as I said, I mean, I've heaved cartons and documents of um, complex uh, Convey our belts and airports and help to lift, much to um, the dismay of my male colleagues. But I just need to get things done and I do it. But that's what a leader should do is to be involved in and understand the entire process of whatever task she might have. Don't just give instructions and say, oh, which also some people might do, male and female. Um, the other thing that you have to look at is that when women enter the business community or any uh, public or private sector enterprise, they take with them their responsibilities to family and community. So they still have to think about maintaining a good family life and structure if they have children, if they are daughters, if they are siblings, they have to carry all that baggage. And I use the term um, in quotes with them because they mean daughters and wives and friends, etc., um, expected to play a particular role in the group. Of course, when we look at business groups, we see how can you impact your community and how will your business impact the community itself? Because no business, no enterprise exists in a vacuum. So, business women have to be very conscious of the fact that they are operating in an environment which is subject to several other um, influences, let's put it that way. They also have to look at their own performance in the political, social, and economic sphere, spheres. Because every, anyone who studied a bit of sociology will tell you life is politics. From the time you're born, it's politics. You have to learn how to operate within an environment. Some might go overtly into the polit political sphere, but at the same time, you remain embedded in that social sphere where you are a member of a community, a, a, a family, a church group, a professional group, whatever you're in, several uh, what I would call uh, ever widening circles of association. And of course, you are also part of the economic process. So what is your contribution? And how do you see yourselves and your ability to create wealth um, in, in the whole economic process of the country? When we look at women in the public sector, going back to the, the theme on which I was supposed to be speaking, leadership from a public sector perspective, I do believe that one of the things women have to perceive from the inception is that once you are in the public service, you are a servant of the people. 
the taxpayers will pay your salary and you owe them respect and you, you have to treat them with dignity regardless of how they are dressed or whether they look wealthy or not or if they come in claiming who they know or who might know them we have to treat every person coming in to that ministry or public service public agency with respect as a valued customer so that is something else that i feel very strongly about um, when you are in your process you also have to look at who are you influencing as a woman you might not realize it that people are looking to you for leadership especially if you are in a supervisory role at whatever level so you have to think how do i speak to people including the customers how do i speak to my staff the people i supervise how do i speak to my colleagues the people who might be on the same tier of, of um, seniority since we're talking about public service as you are so you have to also be very conscious that you are a role model and it takes in how you dress as well i remember provoking a great deal of laughter when someone interviewed me about dress and this issue of they, they always talk to me about me not wearing sleeves and i said well you know it's a hot country and even when I was working in an air condition, I worked in an air conditioned environment, I would wear a jacket or have a scarf, but I would always take off that jacket or scarf once I left the office because it was hot. And I do not think that really people should be turned away. Seeking, people are seeking a service <coughs> should be turned away because you know, they do not have their upper arms covered or they're wearing something. Said, All I'm saying is that we have to be educated as a nation and to put training in place so that we can educate our young people about what is appropriate dress for which occasion. And I pointed out, I said, I never in my youth ever had to told what I should wear when. Because when I was a child, my mother was always there, you know, telling us of you. So in a sense, we and Guyana have lost that. It is one of the peripheral things, I think, but it's still important enough because when our young women go for interviews, when they go to a new job, people take them at face value. So you need to say, okay, if you want people to respect you in the business environment or in the social environment where you might be networking, these are the things you should avoid. I used to tell my, my junior staff, I said, look, you can wear what you want, but avoid the spandex. You know, <laughs> and you know, you don't want to see skin peeking out in certain areas. You give them one part, which is they should be covered. But that was all informal, right? But it was that some people, and I, I have to point out, some people do not go out to dress in a business environment. So we have to look at these things. As leaders, as women leaders, you need to point out to your staff. Say, look, if we have casual day, it doesn't mean you can come to work in one of those ripped up dormitories, the jeans that people wear now, even though it might cost four hundred and fifty dollars, thousand US, you wear that is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot wear something that is two sizes too small for you. You know. <laughs> Say that I would tell them, I said, you know, you can't look like a sausage. So, <laughs> because I found that to make the thing humorous to them made it easier. You know, you're not just barking about it, some fuck, so you should, because I think some people do not know. I know younger people do not know how to do And they might not be an environment, in an environment where the older person knows to tell them how to do some people feel bling is dressing up. So you have to say, no, 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 you gotta tone down a little <laughs> You know, and, and say, no, seriously, I am sure you're laughing because you face these things. Mm -hmm. So we have to create an environment where, where our women professionals are perceived to be professionals. They conform up to a point. There's no, there's no 
I'm not saying you must lose your individuality, but you have to conform up to what is expected within that environment. Now, people in the arts and um, creative industries might have a bit more leeway, but if you're going into banking and public service and all the rest of it, you know, you have to talk about it. You can have some flash in the scarf and the shoes and so on, but the dress, whatever it is, if it's a pantsuit or slacks or whatever, it has to conform to a certain standard of dress. And I spend some time on this because I hear about it all often. Um, so, and that is something that people take as face value, and many of times that first impression remains with other people that you will have to work with uh, as it was. Um, but as I go back to what I said about influence, in that you also have the responsibility of guiding the people, male and female, you supervise, so that they know how to behave within certain environments. 